Good morning, uh, colleagues. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Colin Mann. I'm the outgoing president of uh, COS, having been president for two years, and uh, Dr. Phil Hooper is your incoming president. When I was asked to take on the role of COS president, one of the duties I looked forward to the most was being involved in the presentation of the Lifetime Achievement Award. During my time on the COS board for the past eight years, I've always been humbled and inspired by the nominations for the Lifetime Achievement Award, and this year is no exception. The COS Lifetime Achievement Award is presented to individuals who've made a sustained impact nationally and internationally on the growth of the profession, and who have maintained the highest standard of patient care in their practice. The recipient of this award has also been a strong and positive role model in the community and an exemplary mentor and educator. The COS is privileged to honor the life and work of Dr. Will William Dixon. Dr. Dixon received no less than 27 nominations in the submission for this award. He has demonstrated years of leadership, dedication, and commitment to the practice of ophthalmology. He's a mentor and a role model for two generations of ophthalmologists, and as, you, as was described in the nominations, as a gifted surgeon and a natural-born teacher. As you will hear, Dr. Dixon was not able to join us in person, but I'm told that he is looking in by Zoom today. So uh, welcome, Dr. Dixon. I would now invite Dr. Dixon's colleague, Dr. Hall Chu, to tell us more about Dr. Dixon and his distinguished career. Dr. Chu. Uh, thank, thank you, Dr. Mann, and thank you to the COS. Um, good morning. It is my honor to introduce Dr. William Dixon, the winner of this year's COS Lifetime Achievement Award. Dr. Dixon completed his internship in 1965 and made the most important decision of his life when he married his fiancée, Sylvia. Bill and Sylvia moved to Calgary, where he worked as a general practitioner. However, he was more interested in the surgery and positive outcomes associated with ophthalmology. After a year of practice as a GP, he was accepted into the Toronto Ophthalmology Residency Program by Dr. Clement McCullough, himself an inaugural winner of the same award. In 1970, upon graduating from residency, he was awarded the Lister Research Fellowship, completing his Cornea and External Disease Fellowship at Moorfields in London, England. You can see Bill pictured here amongst many of his cohorts here, who are some of them in the room here with us. In 1972, upon graduating from residency, he was awarded, sorry, in 1972, he was appointed as staff at Sunnybrook Hospital and the University of Toronto, where he had an illustrious career spanning over five decades, winning many teaching awards Dr. Dixon was the ophthalmologist-in-chief from 1987 to 2010. Bill joined the Ontario Division of the I Bank of Canada in 1978 and served as the medical director and or co-director for 39 years, retiring from the I Bank in 2017. From 1980 to 2002, he was a chair of the COS Committee on I Banking. He also served on the National Council of the CNIB. His dedication to eye banking and corneal transplantation over this period laid down the foundation for advances at the eye bank with the assistance of Drs. David Rootman, Charlotte Wedge, and Clara Chan, and eye bank managers Linda Sharpen and Christine Humphreys. Bill also served internationally working with Orbis and performing international teaching missions. He's pictured here after returning from a mission with his close friend, a true giant in ocular plastics, the late Dr. Jeff Hurwitz, who we will really greatly miss by all, be greatly missed by all of us. Dr. Dixon has trained hundreds of ophthalmology residents, many having comp completed their first cataract surgery with him. Uh, I remember my first cataract surgery. After going through almost two full bags of BSS solution, Dr. Dixon told me, doctor, the cornea isn't going to last much longer, so you better step harder on that foot pedal <laughs> yeah, and get that FACO, FACO going and start getting that cataract out, he said. He was always very calm, cool, and patient with trainees, and he always showed nerves of steel in the OR. Despite his many commitments, he was always available for clinical teaching, and he always took the time to provide wet lab training with the residents using eye bank eyes before we started working on patients. His mentorship has helped trainees enhance their careers and become leaders in our profession. This slide is just a very small sample size of the many trainees he has taught and mentored over his career. Many of you are here right now. 
Throughout five decades of surgery, Dr. Dixon continued to learn and adopt new technology and surgical techniques. He successfully transitioned from extracap to intracap to FACO. And despite nearing retirement, he became one of the earliest Canadian surgeons to adapt to the new endothelial keratoplasty techniques, performing DELEC and DSEC. Uh, Bill retired from surgery in 2013, still at the top of his game. And in honor of his excellence in surgical training, the Department of Surgery at Sunnybrook established the William Dixon Surgical Teaching Award. This is an annual award for excellence in surgical training, not just for certain surgeons, it's for all surgeons in every surgical discipline in the hospital. Bill's dedication to patient care and education was recognized in 2008 by the late Ted Rogers, who bequeathed a $7.5 million donation. Bill and Sylvia worked with the Rogers family to develop this philanthropic donation and used it to establish a basic science research chair, the Dixon Family Chair in Ophthalmology Research, led by Dr. Carol Shermans, re whose research in neurogenesis regulation of the retina and neocortex. This has opened the door to further recruitment of dedicated clinician scientists, such as Dr. Stefan Ongtom and Dr. Brian Balios, to enhance translational research in ophthalmology at the University of Toronto. You know, but behind every great individual, there's a fantastic team for support. And Bill's support comes from Sylvia and sons John and Ross. Sylvia's support and the sacrifices she, Bill, and the Dixon family have made has allowed Bill to accomplish his amazing lifelong career in ophthalmology. This award is for Sylvia, Bill, and the entire Dixon family. So Dr. William Dixon is a great surgeon, an exemplary teacher and mentor, a gentleman, and a strong and positive role model, a dedicated husband, father, and grandfather. He has maintained the highest standard of patient care, and he has made a sustained impact on the growth of the profession, leaving a legacy of teaching, eye banking, and research. So please join me in congratulating Dr. Bill Dixon, the winner of this year's COS Lifetime Achievement Award. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Chu. I'd now ask for Dr. Dixon's recorded acceptance speech to be played, please. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues from across Canada, it's a tremendous honor to be the recipient of the 2022 Lifetime Achievement Award from the COS. Unfortunately, COVID-19 and my health status with stage four mantle cell lymphoma prevent my being in Halifax in person to join you. And I apologize for having to substitute this video. I want to thank Dr. Hall Chu and Brian Balios for suggesting my name and to thank other colleagues across Canada who wrote letters of support. I thank each of them. My 50-year career in corneal cataract ophthalmology at an academic center has been very rewarding for me. Being part of Sunnybrook's Department of Ophthalmology and Vision Sciences with my outstanding colleagues who are also my caring friends is especially treasured. Sylvia and I feel your ongoing support. The residents and medical students have been a wonderful part of my career also. Their inquisitive minds, probing questions, and their individual talents kept me constantly challenged, both in clinics and in the operating room. However, my reddy brown hair changed to white earlier than I expected, so it wasn't always a glory story. Hospital politics also played a role in the color change. Eye banking, of course, has been a very big part of my life as medical director and co-medical director from 1978 to 2017, 39 years. In accepting this Lifetime Achievement Award, I want to provide a little historical perspective about Canadian eye banking. We owe a great debt to those who guided its founding principles. One being that transplantation tissue would always be provided free for patients, and the second being that we took all donations offered and the iBank would sort out the one suitable for transplantation. 
The remainder, remainder were used for research and teaching. It was in 1955 that the COS, the CNIB, and the University of Toronto established the iBank of Canada at U of T. Without the financial and administrative support of the CNIB, it might never have succeeded. Without Mrs. Ann Wolf and her family support, I doubt it could have been as successful as it was, as soon as it was. Today, tissue and organ donation is almost an accepted concept. Not so, however, in 1955. But as a young, intrepid spirit with a wonderful smile and organizational skills and a deep commitment to human body parts donation, Anne took on the medical establishment and the general public. She was considered a ghoul and disrespectful for the dead. But gradually she turned these attitudes around. She also gave herself totally, 24 seven, to receive eyes for many years with her mother and family members sitting by her home phone waiting for a call while Anne walked her baby or did errands and before there was any such a thing as a pager. It was an unbelievable commitment. Eye banking could not have succeeded without committed volunteers, most of whom were organized by Ann Wolf. There were family doctors in many parts of the province who removed eyes day or night. Lions clubs who organized their members for driver relays to bring these eyes to a point near Toronto where Ann met them. Bus lines, planes and trucking companies brought Ann her eyes. Early Canadian eye banking is truly an inspirational story. Anne was awarded the Order of Canada in 1995 for her exceptional work. My work with Anne at conventions, on radio and TV, all to promote eye donation was wonderful. She was fun and her medical humor was contagious. Her phone calls around my allocated eyes were amusing sometimes, such as, Quote, these eyes are absolutely gorgeous. He died shoveling snow yesterday afternoon. My wet labs in Sunnybrook, Solwars, preceded surgical simulators and Kensington, starting in the late 1980s with support and permission from the hospital executive. Stort Instruments donated a complete set of cataract and corneal instruments. We had started by removing seeds from green peppers, then moved on to eye bank eyes, which were not suitable for transplantation. We were able to do complete operations, initially intracap, then extracap, then phaco. Orientation to the surgical microscope and surgical and suturing practice are vital before resident surgery on patients. I felt that a pair of eyes donated for research and training saved as much sight or more than a pair of transplantable corneas. Lastly, but first really, I want to thank my wife and our sons, Ross and John, who shared their time and gave up our time together for my corneal surgical practice in the 1970s, 80s and early 90s before there was sufficient tissue to be offered for elective bookings. I had to do transplants at literally any hour of the day or night when the operating room became available. Sylvia also worked with me in the office for 30 years. Again, I want to thank the COS for the Lifetime Achievement Award. I also want to thank Dr. Colin Mann, who made a special trip to Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center en route to his vacation to present the award to me personally. And although I cannot be with you in person, I am in Halifax with you in spirit. Thank you for this great honor. As Dr. Dixon mentioned, I had the opportunity to present the Lifetime Achievement Award to him in Toronto. It was truly a great honor and privilege for me to do, be able to do so uh, with family and colleagues in attendance. Uh, Bill, I know we all wish you good health. Uh, hope we can all congratulate you in person in the future at some point. 
uh, and it was a, a pleasure to meet you and Sylvia and your family uh, at that uh, ceremony. That concludes our Lifetime Achievement Award ceremony. Thank you all for attending. This is my last opportunity from a podium to uh, uh, thank you all for coming to Halifax. It's my backyard. Uh, I hope it, she's treated you well and that you've enjoyed your time in Nova Scotia. Even more, I get, hope you get a couple of days to uh, see a bit more of Nova Scotia and this area before you need to return home and safe travels to everyone as you go. There is, however, much more left of the meeting. I'm, it, I think it's reflective of the job that uh, uh, Mona and the team, the annual meeting planning committee, committee meeting uh, team did. Uh, the next session start at 1045 with a cataract session, neuro-ophthalmology session, public health ophthalmology session, an OCT masterclass, and a pediatric ophthalmology STC. Amazing. Please don't forget to visit the exhibit hall during the break and show your support to our sponsors, who we really appreciate. Thank you again, and uh, congratulations, Dr. Dixon. Thank you.